Satellites repaired. You can resume normal operations. All systems are go. Extraordinary. Fantastic. Eh? Do you realize, children, that astronauts are floating in space millions of miles over our head right now? Uh, that satellites let us see and hear historic events that may be happening anywhere in the world? And we... Ah. Hello, yes. You're calling from Sydney, Australia, you say? What is it you want? The Baker's Dream Bread Palace? No, wrong number. No, I don't make chocolate eclairs. No, I don't deliver buns. You'd better check the number. Really, do I look as though I bake sugar buns? But all the same, it's extraordinary. They phone from Australia across the world by satellite, and what progress. All that thanks to men and women whose discoveries help us understand our universe, to dominate it, and even venture into outer space. All because of a wrong number. Outer space, the universe, well, I mean, it's immense, almost infinite, mysterious, too. Will you tell us, Maestro, how do we make discoveries about it? Yes, will you tell us? You remember Galileo? Galileo was able to show that the Earth, as well as the other planets, turn around the sun. In the very year he died, oh. Isaac Newton was to be born. And he was to become one of the greatest discoverers of all time. But, Maestro, you're one of the greatest, too. You know it all. No, it's true. I know a lot of things. I learned them. But it was others, real geniuses, who discovered them. You'll see. It's fascinating to learn about things really fascinating. Now, Isaac Newton, he is what I would call a true discoverer, even when he was only a child. But you can see for yourself. Isaac, where are you? Isaac! Isaac's mother expected him to grow up and become a good farmer. Uh, but he had other things on his mind than sheep and cows. Hmm. The level seems to go down regularly, at intervals. So we could use it in measuring time. Now then, let me see, we should... Ah! Well, Isaac, you got another one of your brainstorms? You discover where you fall in the water, you get wet? I'm making a clock. A clock? Your clock is gonna be a waste of time. What a laugh! <laughs> yeah, go ahead and laugh. Mm. <laughs> There's my clock. It's four in the afternoon. You'll see. I have no time for this nonsense. <laughs> Isaac, it's already five o'clock. Isaac, all our sheep, where are they? According to my clock, it's time they're back. It says five o'clock. Isaac, where are the sheep? They went off that way. I'll find them. Well, I never. His clock really works. He is intelligent. Yeah, I could have done the same thing. Could have done, could have done. The tax are simple. The sheep, Mother, I wasn't paying attention. They're in the pasture, I guess. You want to know where the sheep are? Yes, Isaac. There. Where the kite is. Take this sack to the market. It's very heavy. Be careful.
Well, now, if everybody is here, we'll start. Uh, Isaac Newton, tell me exactly, when was the discovery of America? No, oh, oh, I'm not sure about it. Uh... 1492, sir. Correct. And as for you, Newton, you do much better at learning lessons rather than wasting time in your daydreams. <laughs> watch this, watch, watch, watch. watch. <laughs> Ow! You shouldn't have done that. You know what you are? A big sissy! He's small, old Newton, but he knows how to fight. They've just been taught that the violence of shock is proportional to the mass in question and the velocity at moment of collision. I agree with him. The Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pythagor Pachava. Isaac Newton. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, sir. Jim Knowles. A plus B squared equals. Uh, um, uh, uh, well, um... Isaac Newton. Two A plus two B plus two A B, sir. Mr. Isaac Newton, you're accepted in Trinity College, Cambridge. This is a rare honor for a simple farmer's son, but you will have to work to earn your living. Yes, of course. Mm, no, I'm not hungry. You may take my leftovers. Bravo, Mr. Newton. You are an excellent mathematician. You others are big dunces, leftovers. As far as you're concerned, you get the prize that you have earned. <laughs> In 1665, a terrible sickness, the Black Death, struck London. At the time, it was one of the biggest cities in the world. He's my son, my only son. <sighs> This dreadful misfortune. We're paying for our sins. It's punishment from God. Ah, uh, Christian charity. Pity. Get away of the pity. plague. You'll infect us all on your way. Where can we go? Anywhere. The countryside, the forest. What does it matter? You will die. My friends, the threat of the plague is too great. Trinity College will close until the epidemic has ended. Our future is in the hands of the Lord. Where will you go? To Woolsthorpe, my mother's farm. Why not come to our castle? There's plenty of room there. We'll have a good time. Thanks, I won't come. I would rather go home. There are a few ideas I want to work on in peace and quiet. The Black Death was to claim 70,000 victims that year in London alone. of rain. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Well, well. It's nice. What is it? This is a glass prism, my little sister. And when light rays enter it, they are refracted. Refracted? Look, I'll show you. Isaac, why are you doing that? You'll see. It's white light, but I think colors make it up. Rays of different colors that can be separated with a prism. Look, the colors of the rainbow. And I'm sure that each color is inseparable. Good. Now hold it still. 
They're all pure colors. See the red? It does not separate into other colors. Now, we'll make another test. Hold the prism like that. Now, wait. Now, if I reunite these colors, I should end up with the original white light. And there it is. Oh, good heavens, Isaac, are you sick, son? Why do you ask, Mother? You're all colors. Oh, that's sunlight, Mother, split into all its different colors. See? Trust you to find another way to worry your mother. Eh, hey, what's the good of it? Well, if it's blue, it's blue. If it's yellow, it's yellow. If you go on like that, I'm gonna see red. It's really fascinating, Newton's discovery. And pretty as well. I can turn you into a rainbow. <laughs> Look, Isaac, the apple way up there on the tree. It looks as if it's right next to the moon. Ouch! Anything not being supported has to come down. The apple fell on me. But not the moon, fortunately. Why not? Uh, because it's high up there, high in the sky with the stars, right? No, that's right? not it. It's because it's too far away. Has to be another reason, Hannah. Whatever it is, Isaac, I know that you will find it. Yes, in fact, the moon is drawn to the Earth. Otherwise, it would go off in space. Logically, it should fall. But it stays the same distance. The center of the Earth, which attracts the apple, is 6,400 kilometers down, approximately. The moon is 380,000 kilometers away, approximately. 60 times greater in distance, approximately. So it must have an acceleration 3,600 times greater than that of the apple. If only I could measure the Earth's radius precisely. Yes, that must be it. All bodies in orbit attract each other in direct proportion to their mass and the inverse ratio to the square of their distance. Do you realize, children, that's the law of gravitation? And how does it work exactly? <laughs> as you can see, this is a magnet that attracts iron. Look here. Now, as you see, the magnet does not pick up the tax. Have you any idea why? It's not close enough. Exactly. But if I move it closer to the tax, there are you are. Gravitation is very much the same. The greater the distance separating bodies, the weaker the gravitational force between, see? Is that clear? Ah. Yeah. Then why is it that the moon doesn't fall down? The Earth's much larger, much more massive, so the attraction it has for the moon must be very great. Yeah, that is an excellent question. Thanks. It's just as demonstrated by Newton. The moon would fall down to the Earth, but another force is keeping it up. Centrifugal force. Now, let's say the moon is this marble turning around in my hand, which is the Earth. The string we can imagine is gravity. It holds the marble to Earth. The centrifugal force is the movement. It pushes the marble away. The two forces, centrifugal and gravitational, are equal. And in just oh. this way, the planets are held in their positions around the sun, just as the moon is around the Earth. And before Newton, nobody had ever realized that it's because of centrifugal force that the moon doesn't fall to Earth. In other words, it's a little piece of string that holds the moon up. Huh? <laughs> Very droll. It's to help you understand, muleheads, I put a string on the marble to hold it. <laughs> there you are, all the planets turning round and round the sun. Oh! <laughs> oh! <Ooh. laughs> Doesn't work. That system of Newton's. Gets all tangled up. Maestro already told us that gravity doesn't really need strings, Mulehead. <laughs> hmm. In the same year, although the plague continued ravaging England, another tragedy engulfed London.
More than 10,000 houses went up in flames, and it took years to rebuild the city. And with the plague finally ended, Trinity College Cambridge started classes again. And Isaac Newton found the time to invent the modern telescope and a thousand other things. At the age of 27, he is going to be appointed professor of mathematics at the world-famous Cambridge University. He's already made most of his great discoveries. And so I conclude that our Earth is not a perfect sphere. Rather, it is flattened at the poles, rather like a tangerine. The moon attracts the Earth with the same gravitational force as Earth does the moon. In addition, any force exerted by one body on another necessarily entails an equal and opposite reaction. My third law of motion. It is my understanding that... That is precisely the principle that will be applied with the jet plane and rocket centuries later. Yeah, hear him. Speed is proportional to the force originally imparted to the object. And a ball once thrown might roll forever if there were no friction to bring it to a stop. And I insist a cannon with enough power to launch a body into space to a certain height and at a certain speed, that body would not fall back. It would stay in orbit as the moon does. There you are. You all heard. Newton's theory for putting a satellite into orbit around the Earth. And he was three centuries ahead of his time. Extraordinary, wouldn't you say? Now, a man on the moon is much lighter. <laughs> and why do you suppose he feels light? Because he got too thin, there was nothing to eat in his spaceship. <laughs> because it's a lot smaller compared to the Earth. He's a lot lighter because the force of gravity is weaker. Mm-hmm. But then on larger planets, I guess the opposite's true. He'd feel heavier. Oh, imagine. Saturn is a hundred times larger than the Earth. Oh, you'd feel heavy. so heavy. Watch it, Maestro. Watch it. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> Well, Newton must have been admired by everybody for all his wonderful discoveries. That's not always the way you might have noticed. Almost none of our great discoverers were recognized by the contemporaries. They were all criticized at the time. For the present, young Newton is keeping his work quiet. Master, these few sheets contain a monument of knowledge. No question, you have absolutely to publish it all. You are young, enthusiastic, Mr. Halley. That's fine, but I'm not altogether certain. My calculations are approximate, and without knowing the exact radius of the Earth, nothing can be proved. It's imprecise. Good Lord! A comet! Now, now, Mr. Halley. Are we taking wild ducks for comets, eh? <laughs> are we? Oh, but I assure you, sir. Are you trying to tell me a novice astronomer like you is discovering new comets? Oh, my goodness. It really is a comet with a long tail of incandescent dust. Let me see. So, my young friend, you have discovered a comet. Splendid. Excellent work. All my congratulations. Listen, Master, its orbit corresponds quite precisely to your law of universal gravitation. Now, you must publish. You're a true genius. How I appear to others, I can't say. I only know that to me, I'm a child at the shore of a great unknown ocean. Master, you mustn't lose any more time now. At the Royal Society, Mr. Hook claims he's discovered the laws of gravitation. You realize if he delivers uh -huh. his paper first? Now, Master, you can't wait, and I'm going to help. Oh, yes, this law of universal attraction, its mechanism is appealing. That its physics leaves a lot to be desired. Newton stole my theory on gravity. Don't get so upset, Mr. Hook. This theory is in any case stupid. We would float around in air, and in all directions if it were right. What's your opinion, my eminent colleague, Mr. Leibniz? Newton's plagiarized my work on the differential calculus here. Anyway, this theory of gravitation is clearly completely absurd. Your opinion on it, Mr. Huygens? Mm-hmm. Oh, they treated him like that, and they were great. Hook, Huygens, Leibniz? Yes, yes, yes. And what did Isaac Newton do? No, oh, Newton, well, he bore it all. As usual, he was into a thousand things. Wind resistance, projectiles, impacts. 
politics and pendulums. How sound is propagated, the properties of liquids. There's a thousand things, like meteorology, theology, chemistry, alchemy. Oh, yes, yes, alchemy. Yes, indeed. He was very much into alchemy, and he was interested in money, too. He even became director of the Mint in London. His feats in outwitting forgers became legendary. Isaac Newton, you have been elected president of the Royal Society. Now remember, protocol is quite strict. Right knee. Now go ahead. more than anyone in advancing science. We are pleased to recognize your achievements. Arise, Sir Isaac. Everything Sir Isaac Newton taught us over three centuries ago, it's all still true, and he made a great contribution to our knowledge. His laws of universal mechanics opened the way to our modern technology. And with pure mathematics, just constructs of the mind, pure intelligence, not bad, eh, for a lad from the farm. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's ever done any better. And the theory of relativity? Ah, well, yes, certainly, to be sure. Einstein, well, there is Einstein, yes. But he, too, in his head, will remake our universe. That's another story. It's fascinating. I'll tell you, don't worry. Don't worry.